Hello, this is Scott Forsythe here, January 1st, 2011. Today I'm recording the first in a 52-week commitment covering various IT pro and developer tools of the trade, 10 minutes or less. My goal is that you can tune in without taking too much time at all and just get up to speed on various different tools. Starting the first four weeks with 101 type lessons, basic tools of the trade for us IT pros. Uh, later on I plan to cover IIS, application request routing for load balancing, SQL Server, URL rewrite, Hyper-V, and much more. So today I want to start with a core tool. Uh, for example, I consider this like a hammer for a tradesman. They have a basic tool everyone carries in their tool belt, and this is one of them. Ping is a tool that is available and actually has been available in Windows as far as I can remember. And the idea is, for example, let's just do a ping. You can get it from the command line. You can do start cmd enter to get to the command line. I have a shortcut to it here on my taskbar. And if I type ping google.com, what this does by default, and actually ping is not just available in the Windows operating system. You'll get it on network devices. You'll get it in the Linux operating system, many other places as well. And so ping space where I want uh, to send that test packet to. It's a round trip. So what it does, in this case it defaults to 32 bytes. It's going to send a tiny little packet to Google's routers. They're going to respond back and this is going to record how long it took for that round trip to take. In this case it's 8 milliseconds, 12 milliseconds, 8 and 8. Very, very fast, which is what you would expect. I prefer using Google for all my tests, uh, basic tests for connectivity to the internet, just because they're always there, they're fast, they have routers around the world, so no matter where you test, it's always going to be very close to you, and they're virtually never down. They work very, very hard to make sure that they're not down. This gives me connectivity tests to the internet. You can see here the four packets were all successful. I do have access on this machine out to the internet, and we can test here if I want google.com, and you can see the Happy New Year 2011 icon here. And okay, so the next thing I want to be able to test here, I do this often, is if we could do a ping slash question mark. And this shows me various different parameters available to us here. And my favorite, there's a few here, you know, IPv4 related stuff, the size of the packets, how many it's going to try. In this case, I have the dash T is basically ping forever. And so what we're going to do is you can do a ping google.com dash t. And this will just ping over and over and over until I close this window. And I actually very frequently will have a ping window going just like this in the background of my computer minimized. And ever if I have any kind of slowness in my connectivity, I just quickly open it up. The resources are virtually nil and Google doesn't mind. They're expecting people to do this all the time too, so this can be running all the time. What I can do now is let's say we have a situation where we have a site like contoso.com. I don't really own this. I've kind of hijacked it for the sake of this demo, and I'll cover in future sessions how to do that. And so if I go, it's very, very fast here, but let's say all of a sudden, out of the blue, we, we do a refresh, and look at this. We've got an hourglass. It's not loading. It's not loading. If I wait about a minute, this is going to time out. So I want to find out why is this occurring. First thing I want to do is I want to check my ping, and my ping is doing great, so my connectivity to the internet is good. So now the real question is why is this not working? So we may be tempted to jump into the web server and to see is the website turned off, what it is there, and I'd like to propose the very first thing you do is make sure that your network connectivity to the server is good. So that's pingtoso.com and it resolves to an IP address which is an internal IP address, I happen to know that's fine but we get a request timeout and so right here just from the basic tools available on all of our computers we're able to see I don't have connectivity, I can do a dash T again if I want. So I have internet connectivity but I don't have connectivity to the server. So why would this be? So already we've covered the basics of the ping test. But let's now take this a little bit further and let's look at our second tool. 
second of two tools I want to cover today, and this is a trace route, also available, or trace route, depending on where in the countries, country or countries you live. And so if we do a trace route, www.google.com, this is an example of how a healthy trace route will look, and it has to resolve the different names here at the end. So while that's working, let's do another one to trace route con t o s o. And it's going to be very fast because, in this case, it's right on the same local network. It's right here. And so you can see I was able to access the router, the gateway router here, but then the very next hop did not work for me. Okay, so we can see here that it tried to resolve it but failed right here at the beginning. So here, if we look at, let's go back to the Google one now that this is finished. Here we have in 11 hops, basically there's 11 routers or network devices between me and Google. We can see we have one here locally. I'm within the orcsweb.com domain and uh, we can see a couple different hops there. We get out to Peak 10 which is our provider at orcsweb and then one of their upstream providers is twtelcom.net. We can have a couple hops within them and I didn't look this up. This might be Google or it's another uh, step just before Google and TW Telecom and then we have with, right within Google's network is what this particular one here is. So these 11 hops is kind of common, usually a bit more. Google does really good at making sure that they're uh, resolving whatever IP address they give me is going to resolve very locally here. Uh, so I still haven't got this one working. And why this is, so to simulate the test, I'll tell you what I did. You can see that my access to the router is fine, the access to the internet is fine, but the server itself is not resolving. So it could be a firewall blocking it. It could be uh, various different things. The server itself happens to be down. The router just in front of that server happens to be down. Something of that nature. And sure enough, to simulate this test, what I did, it's a Hyper-V machine. It's a virtual machine, and I paused it. So I'm going to resume it. And there, you can see the second I resumed it, it starts resolving immediately here. And if we go to the page here as well, contosa.com, and hit refresh, I'll hit F5, and you can notice that it's working here as well, which is what our goal is. Uh, make sure that we test before, that it's broken, we fix it, test now, and confirm that it works. Another thing worth taking note of is, let's take a look here. If we go to google.com, Google notice it's working fine. But now let's take a look at Microsoft. Dot com and notice that the IP address is resolved but we're getting a request timed out it does not respond yet if I go to the browser refresh notice the Microsoft.com is working no problem so the reason here is not every router has to announce itself has to respond to a ping so just because the ping is down isn't 100% guaranteed that the site is down uh, but I would probably say, a wild guess, I would say that greater than 90% of all routers announce will respond to a ping, and the test works almost all the time, but occasionally, as in Microsoft.com, they choose not to respond to that ping for whatever reason. So, not to fear, sometimes that's completely expected. And so just to recap, we used a ping tool. You can use ping space the name and it'll default to four packets. The timeout is four seconds. And if we want to do it continually, you use a dash T at the end, or it doesn't have to be at the end. You can drop it in here too. Not that it really matters too much. And we can see we can ping things like contoso.com, which I've done here. And right now it's working very, very fast. And we also saw the trace route. And actually watch the spelling on this. T R A C E. RT, no space, and you put in the address, for example, google.com. And using these basic tools of the trade, you're able to determine the connectivity to the internet and the connectivity to the server itself. And I'll refer to ping tools all the time in future sessions because it's, it's so common that we need to use that as a core troubleshooting tool. Thank you very much.